What's up, guys? Uh, Fubsy Gamer, Julian Ontiveros. I am back with another daily. Uh, daily. I don't know. I got to think of another word to call them besides dailies because that's obviously. Like I say, I'm not trying to be day nine, and then I'm like, welcome to the Fubsy Daily. I got. I guess you guys want to see the top of my head too. Look at that poofy hair. Um, anyway, so I am back for number two. That's dos for those of you who habla el español. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I got some great feedback on the last one. Um, and I got a lot of interesting ideas and a lot of interesting things people wanted me to talk about. They want to talk a lot about that card advantage thing that I talked about before because, um, well, I, I talked about it really fast and I, and I just kind of threw it all out there. Probably I shouldn't have done that. I probably should have prepared. Um, I'm actually not going to talk about that today, but I promise I will soon. Um, by the way, I hope you can't hear the chugga 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 in the background. That's the, the washing machine. It's like right over there, like right, right over there, and then like over there and right there. Um, I know that gives you a really good idea of where it is, but uh, I just, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, I mean, it's, obviously you can't see it. That was, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it right there. So I'm hoping that you cannot hear it as well. And if you can, just kind of dance along or chugga 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 chugga, just have a good time with it. Anyway, what I want to talk about today were, um, or some habits, some like maybe some bad habits that uh, new players have, and then towards the end we'll talk about some some bad habits, or and not necessarily bad, but just habits that people maybe that are more experienced in the game have, and how we can break those habits together. I definitely do some of them. Um, this idea came to me from I was listening to JudgeCast, uh, the most recent one of the most recent JudgeCasts, and they talked about bad habits of good L1 judges. And just good judges in general. And I really like that concept because it doesn't mean that the players are bad or that the judges are bad. What it means is that um, the habits that they're doing are, are not as good as, they're not doing the right things in all situations. And it's, But they're still great players, great judges, and they just want to help them get better. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I figured we'd go over some of the more basic things and also go over some of the more, a uh, little bit more advanced things. We're not going to go too crazy on this one. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, if you end up, if I don't mention something today, or during this, yeah, yeah, today, um, and you think of it, please comment down below, post it down there, um, and maybe I'll make a follow-up video sometime, or we can do some other activity, or, I don't know, have a good time, I'll throw candy bars to people, or something like that, I don't know. But uh, let's get to it. So for this one, I figured this is a more visual example, and so I'm actually going to, i got my play mat set up here. Look, twisty turn, look, there's my, look, there's my bike. I never, point, never use that bike, ever, 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 right there. Um, and let's do this. There's my Liliana playmat. I got this at the uh, Utah GP, and she is beautiful. Uh, I got her signed by some pro players. I don't know if you guys can see all the signatures there. Um, it was a good time. Uh, anyway, let's let's take a look. First of all, I want to pimp my box. This is a World of Warcraft um, box. Epic, epic collection. And I love it because it holds all my cards perfectly and my dice. This is what I bring to tournaments right here. I don't bring anything else. Um, a lot of people use fat packs. Let me get my... So here's like a, here's like a fat pack. Oh, I keep uh, basic... Land oh, no, I keep uh, random cards. Anyway, but like the fat pack, this is... I don't have an empty one, but it doesn't hold as much. You can see like if I put a box, you know, I get maybe... Two boxes and some extra cards, and that's it. So I have to carry on two fat packs if I want to fit everything in there really well. Um, anyway, let me show you what I have in my wow box here, because I love it. Um, shout out to Game Grid for giving me this box. Eh, get out of here, fat pack. So here's what I have. I have my Delver deck, because Delver... I look like I'm flipping you guys off. Woo! Uh, the Delver deck, because that is beautiful. This is my main deck. Dice, obviously. Uh, I have here some tokens for when I'm... Look what I'm playing. I got my soldiers. I got my e speedy too. I got my spirit tokens. Uh, where's that? There. Angel. That is in Spanish. You could probably can't read that. I don't know if it turns it sideways. Oh, look at that glare. Anyway, got all my tokens there. Then uh, there's an idea that I got from a player here, Aaron Nakamura. Muranaka. Aaron Muranaka. Uh, he played on the Pro Tour a long time ago. He's been a player for. He's been awesome. He's like, oh man, he's amazing. So here's what I have. So I have I have a, a busted sleeve. And then I have, um, these are empty sleeves right here. A whole bunch of empty sleeves for replacements for my deck. I only use purple sleeves. I don't know if you noticed that. Purple Dragon Shields is the only sleeves I use. Uh, they're the best ever. And then my tokens are in black. So I got a whole bunch of empty sleeves. Some are replacements just in case sleeves break. And then also they're just empty. And then I have like 20 or 25 of each, uh, of every basic land sleeved up here. 
and this is for drafting and for sealed events. So that way, um, I don't have to worry about getting the stores land and getting all these crappy lands. Um, we're going to talk about it more later, but and this is a very, very minute point. It really doesn't matter in draft like at all most of the time. But something that I like is I like using, oh, we should get the good ones. We should get the islands because island is the best in magic. I really like using the same art on my lands. I don't care so much what the art is. I just want it to be the same. So I have just, you know, a whole bunch of the same. Uh, uh, these are all the same uh, art. I don't know. I like it. <clears throat> and in some situations, it, it's important, especially in your standard deck. Uh, we'll get into that later. But yeah, so I got like 20 of each land sleeved up here. And then I have my extra cards. So this this is probably like this is like the most important thing that I carry around here. Uh, this I got idea I got from Josh Snow. So shout out to Josh Snow. These are my extra Delver cards. Um, so you can see I've got like the Mana Leak. Cause we only have three in the main deck right now. So I got a fourth one right there. Another Image, Dissipate, Divine Offering, Misstep, Sabotage. There's my Rune Chanter's Pike. Um, Batter Skull. Where'd that Batter Skull go? Right there. So people pick this up, and a lot of times they're just like, what is this? What's happening right here? But this is, I carry this around with me wherever, every, anywhere I go, so that at any time, right before a tournament starts, um, I can audible. I can switch out cards in my, in my deck. Um, these are any card that we've ever considered putting in um, the Delver deck. And so, yeah, Josh Snow, Snow taught me this. You know, feeling of Dread. Whoops, don't put that in your Delver deck. That was bad. But there it is, another day, social purge. Anyway, I keep this in my box too. Then I have my backup deck. This is actually the red-green deck that I that I got second place at the PTQ with. Um, I just kept it because <laughs> I was really happy with it. And I haven't really updated it like at all. This is like in case a buddy of mine wants to play, or this is just the audible deck. So I got Delver and then like another deck, you know, in this Street Fighter box. I have my red-green extra cards here. Um, not as many, but there they are. Um, I got my red green, I got token, my wolf tokens for my hunt masters, and then I have my EDH deck. You know how many games I played with this EDH deck? Like two. I don't play EDH, like, ever, but, I, but I just keep this here, just in case, oh look, to me, uh, just in case we're ever playing EDH, I don't know, like, I just don't want to be left out ever. Um, ooh, that kind of got bent, that's okay. I don't want to be ever left out, so I'm not, I'm not, like, a hardcore EDH player at all. Uh, for my birthday... Oh, look at, ooh, look at that. Whoops. See how curved that is? That was a mistake. My bad. Well, I guess I need a new general. Whatever. Um, anyway. Oh, that hurt. Uh, yeah, I just have the EDH stick here because it's just in case uh, if people are playing EDH. I don't want to be left out. I don't ever want to just sit around. So I have an EDH stick there, but I never, I never play. It's not pimped out at all. It's just, oh, like I was saying, it's like the, it's like the, the, whatchamacallit? Like the pre-constructed deck. Um... And then I just added some extra cards that I had. I put in, like, you know, I put in the Titans, and I put in, I don't know, Tamiyo, and I put in, like, a Mole Drifter, and just stuff like that. Just whatever. EDH. I don't ever play EDH, but there it is. Anyway, love this box. And it's very durable. Uh, it comes with a sweet little lid on it. And I'm really happy with this. Anyway, so I, I think you should pick it up. Uh, Game Grid gave me this one for free. I'm sure you can find a WoW player, or, like, a, like a card shop who just isn't using the box. But these are a really good deal. I, I'm, I'm talking like a salesman, right? But like, <laughs> these are like 30 bucks. The, the fat pack's like 40, right? Maybe 50. These are 30 bucks. They came with, they come with like maybe more cards than the fat pack. Whole bunch of packs. They come with a, like a, like a, like a, like a playing mat. And they come with like these dividers. They, they come with a lot of cool stuff. But I just got the box from my magic cards. So, okay. Bad habits of new players. So let's, let's talk about this. Let's pull out the good old Delver deck. See, purple. It's all purple. Got my side board in there. Um, I don't even have any M13 cards in here yet. Doesn't matter. So we're shuffling, we're shuffling, we're shuffling. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. So there is um, there is a, a cheat that's going around right now. Not, or not now. It's been around for forever. And it's called the double nickel. So my first, my first tip, I should start there. My first tip is don't, if you're going to pile shuffle, don't shuffle into piles of five. Because there's this cheat that's called the double nickel. And what it is, is where people take their deck and they organize it. So all the lands are on top, and all the spells and creatures are on the bottom. Right? Just lands, 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 and then spells and creatures. And then they, they shuffle it um, into five piles. And so they're doing this, right? And you can see, I'm not going to do the whole thing. So we do this the whole way down, right? So first, all the lands are going down, one after another. Then all the spells are going on top. So let's just say we would finished, right? So we finished nickel shuffle. We finished our five pile shuffling, right? So now, in any given stack, we know that we have 
five lands, or four lands, and then the rest are spells on top. And that's how every one of these stacks is. So then what they do, they pile it, they pick it up, and then they pile shuffle it again. So right now we have like, right now we have like four lands and then like six spells. Four lands, six spells. Something like that, right? No, well, five piles of twelve. So like four land, eight spells or something. Then they pile shuffle it again. And what happens is, this perfectly distributes their mana. So like every third card is land. Um, and maybe like three and then four. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. The important thing is, it's cheating. It's cheating. It's dirty, rotten cheating. So don't don't do that. Don't. So the reason I'm telling you not to shuffle into fives is because if I ever see a player do that, I immediately become suspicious, you know. And I'm like, and I'm like, wait a second. Oh, you can't even see me. Wait a second, you. Do you got the squinty eye? You know, I, I'm watching. I'm like five. That's not good. And they five again, and I'm like, that's not good at all, right? Because I just get nervous that they might be cheating. Not that you absolutely are cheating, but you could be cheating. So how I shuffle. <clears throat> this is just a. This is not a very important thing. I like to. I like to pile shuffle. I understand that pile shuffling, isn't sufficient, right? It's not. Pile shuffling alone is not sufficient to randomize your deck, but I, I pile shuffle into piles of seven, just because it's a good number. I don't know, like that seven, over and over and over again. The reason I do this is um, the biggest reason to pile shuffle is because if you just stack shuffle like this, what can oh I almost dropped cards. What can happen is as you stick these piles. These are new sleeves, right? So you can see that they've that they've that they've you know they've uh, intersected pretty well there, but a lot of times when you go to do this, you'll get like a pile. If I can make one, man, my sleeves are too new. But what happens? You can get like maybe like you know four or five cards like like this. And you get a whole stack like this, and it just sticks together because like they're sticky from the oils in your fingers, and they just stick in. And so you start getting a whole bunch of sticks together. So I pile shuffle once just to kind of just kind of you know separate out the cards to make sure the cards aren't stuck together, and then when I'm done, then I then I stack it a whole bunch of times and just make sure you randomize, randomize, randomize. I mean you have the full three minutes. Take the minutes in between the rounds, or if you're FNM, just take time. Just make sure you're fully randomized. From there, yeah, that's it. So I guess don't don't do the five because it looks like you could possibly be cheating, and I just avoid that. I don't know. Maybe that's not a big deal. That's really not that important. But let's move on deck. So we draw our opening hand, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we won the die roll. Woohoo, we win! So how do these mulligans work, right? Well, you can both look at your hands right now, right? So I look at my hand, my opponent looks at his hand. We're looking, we're looking. So here's my hand for Delver. What a crazy deck this is. Um, it's a good hand. We're going to keep it. So we decide we're going to keep. Oh, so, let's, so, so what happens is, yeah, so we decide we're going to keep. Then our opponent decides that they're going to mulligan. Now that's very important because if you're on the draw, you don't decide if you mulligan until your opponent decides that they mulligan. So you wait for them. They say, I'm mulliganing, then you mulligan. Then they mulligan, then you mulligan. You mulligan, just back and forth like that. Anyway. And you can take your mulligans at the same time. It's about the decision. The decision process is the important part. Um, I'm, maybe I'm going a little bit too advanced. Let, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just slow down a little bit. Let's just back it up just a little bit. And let's talk about some of the more, oh, okay, here's a good, okay, this is a really good tip that new players do. So I got, this is kind of a coincidence that it happened like this. Maybe I organized it. I don't think I did. So let's say we get our opening hand, and I'm just going to, like, okay, so we, get, we draw our opening hand, and it's like this. You guys see that? Tons of players that I see in FNM immediately draw the hand, and then they go like this. They go, whoop, this goes back there. Whoop, this goes back there. And then they go, oh, let's see, two and two, put the twos together, there's a three, the three goes over there, and they organize it so that it looks like this. So let's draw another opening hand. I'm going to draw an opening hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to show you guys the cards, and I'm going to do that, okay? Oh, let's turn it like this. Ooh, dizzy. Okay, so I'm your opponent. I'm your opponent, girl. I'm looking at my opening hand, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You guys didn't see that very well at all. I kind of dropped the camera. Let's do another one. This is live television, people. I want to show you this. I want to make a, I want to make a point about this. Let's try again. Okay, here's my... Oh, this is really bad. Okay, here's my opening hand. And I go... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And like this. Uh -huh. 
Okay. How many lands do I have? Which ones are the lands? For those of you who said all of these, you're right. It's so obvious what's happening when you're reorganizing your hand like this. So it's really easy for your opponent to go, oh, he's got five lands. or oh, he's got two. Maybe they know the exact number. They don't know the exact number, but they know if you have a lot. They know if you're moving a whole bunch of cards to the back. They know what's going on there. So just keep your hand randomized. You guys don't see this hand? This hand is ugly. That's five lands. Dismember, mutagen, and growth. That you don't keep. That's garbage. Anyway, I just want to talk about that. Reorganizing your hand when you draw. and it, I mean, when you draw your opening. And it's the same, like, if you draw a card. So here's my hand. Look, here's an example. So here's my hand, right? Got my hand right there. And I draw a card from my deck. I look at it, and I go, uh-huh, right there. So if you know that before I put all my lands back here, you know that I just drew a really cheap spell. And I did. Ponder. The hand just got way better. If I draw another card, and I'm like, uh-huh, right there. Another cheap card. Draw another one, uh -huh. you go in the back, well, there's another land. So you just don't keep your hand organized like that. People do that because they, they tend to forget cards, and I don't know, just don't, just don't do that. Just mix it up. Just constantly, you know, you can mix up your hand. Some people like to flicker through them like this, and they do all this sort of stuff. I don't know how important that is. I do it kind of out of habit, kind of like how StarCraft players are always in, even when they're not doing anything, they're just mining. Similar, right? I just do this because I can. Oh, look, I got a mail. Let's close the hat. Kind of like Facebook. Oh, brother. Okay, so we have this. Keep your hand messy. Just draw your card and put it in your hand and shuffle it away. So we're going to get into that a little bit more later. But the point is, don't organize your hand because it's so easy for your opponent to tell what's going on. Even like a really new player will still be able to see, oh, he's doing something over there. You know, he'll be able to kind of figure that out. Um... But yeah, so we don't want to do that. Now, I posted, it's kind of funny, but I actually posted on Reddit and on my Facebook to get some ideas. So I want to kind of look at this for a second. Oh, this is good. Okay, so let's, okay, so we got our opening hand, right? Uh, I'm going to get a new opening hand. Oh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got our opening hand here. Oh, look, look. No lands at all. I'm so good at shuffling. But so so uh, so we're playing our game. Let's talk about let's talk about the the, the 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 structure of the turn. How about that? Let's do that next, okay? So oh, so I gotta get that. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the camera, watching this shuffle going. Oh look, there's two islands. Oh look, a glacier. Look at all those lands down there. There's a geist. There's another geist. What the heck? There's another sheep chrome. This, oh man, this would be so cheating if I could always shuffle like this. All right, so let's get our opening hand. Let's make it a game a little bit. Let's say, let's just get like this many cards. I just got like 10 cards here. Okay, so we're, we're in the middle of a game, okay? So we have a land. Oh, I play with my lands in front, by the way, because I'm weird like that. Most people play them back here. I'll put them back here. Usually I play with them up there. And there's a land. I'm gonna keep this one. We have a Delver out. We have cast a Dutaxian Probe. And we have cast a Dismember, okay. So here's here's the position and here's the state right now. Okay, it's my opponent's turn. My opponent does nothing. He doesn't even play a land, right? So we laugh. <laughs> You're so dumb. You didn't play land, and now it's our turn. Oh, and oh, and I just played the double. So it's so my land is tapped like that, and I dismembered. So my other land is tapped like that. Okay, now it's our turn, and our double and our double attacked. There we go. So now this is the board state. A two tapped lands. Delver that's tapped because he attacked. My deck is here. My graveyard is here. It's our turn. What's the first step? I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of give a little like a blank space. I want you to answer, even say it out loud if you if, if you're not 100 percent sure. But I want you to say it out loud to yourself. So our opponent goes go, and we go oh end of your turn. Any sneaky end of your turn? No, I'm good. Okay, my turn. First step, draw a card. No, 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 no. The first step, untap. So we untap everything. Untap first. Okay. So, untapped our lands. Then, draw a card. No, no, no. You see, drawing is not the first thing you do in a turn. It's not even always the second thing you do in a turn. We have this Delver. This is in French, but it's Delver. We have to resolve this Delver. Now, we're going to get a little bit advanced here. For, no, we'll, we'll talk about it. So, we're going to do our Delver. We're going to check and see if he's going to flip. I'm going to talk about how we do this trigger in a second. But let's just, so, we check to see the Delver flips. I look. Oh, stupid land. Yeah, he doesn't flip. So, now, draw a card. Yes, now we draw. So the first thing we did, the first thing, untap. Then, 
Because Delver says, during your upkeep, at the beginning of your upkeep. Oh, this is in Spanish, not... Oh, good, okay. So yeah, at the beginning of your upkeep. Then that means you do the upkeep before you draw. So the first thing you do, untap. Then upkeep. Then draw. So we drew our stupid island. Now, what phase are we in? Say it out loud. What phase are we in? We're in main phase one. Very good. Very good. Okay, so we're in main phase one. Oh, let's see. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? I'm going to tell you a secret, guys. Unless you have something specific that you want to do, for example, if we could equip him with a sword right now, or if we could do something to this Delver, or if he had a blocker we wanted to get rid of, we do it, right? Other than that, like, for example, check it out. I got this ponder. I have a ponder. I have a guy that's ain't trapped. I have a mana leak. I'll just show you my whole hand. How about that? Right? So there it is. So here's my whole hand. So how much of this am I going to do before I attack? None. I'm not going to do anything before I attack. I'm just going to attack. That's the first thing you do. If you don't have a play that benefits your combat step, just attack first. Because what if he's got something that he's going to do during your combat and you want to mana leak it? What if he's going to kill your guy with some sort of instant removal, like a tribute to hunger, right? Or that's a bad example. Whatever. It doesn't. You know what I mean. Because you can't target guys, so it's a bad example. But if this guy was something else, right? If he's going to kill something, you're not having to kill your Delver, then you're Geist. So you go, okay, attack. That's the first thing you do. Uh, we're going to go over combat in a second here. But So you attack. Combat. Then, once combat is done, you hit him with your bam, you hit him for his one. Then you do the rest of your turn. Now you notice, I didn't even play a land. I'm just trying to not give my opponent any information at all. I'm just attacking first. Because that way, maybe he thinks I don't have land, maybe he doesn't. You just don't want to give him any information when you're attacking. So you attack, you do your thing. Then we play a land. There's a land. Then we're going to cast our guys to St. Traft. There it is. Done. You can go. So now, oh, okay, but let's back up a little bit. So we were in combat. We just left combat. This is main phase two. Main phase two. Tap the guy. Tap. Play our Geist. Then we are done with our turn. So we move to the end of the turn, right? At, and, at, and that's when cards say at end of turn or at the end of the turn. That's what's happening now. We're at the end of the turn. Pop quiz. Pop quiz for you. Let's say I have like all these cards in my hand. Okay? I got like a million cards in my hand. And I have to discard. Do I do it before or do I do it after the end of turn step? Before or after? Before or after? I do it after. After the end of turn step. So, we have... Okay, end of turn, and your opponent goes, oh, at the end of your turn, I'll Forbidden Alchemy. And you go, okay, great, do your Forbidden Alchemy. Once that's done, then you discard your cards. And then you keep down to your seven. That's just an interesting example, okay? So let's go over the let's go over the turn again. So we have first, untap. Then, and that's when you untap your cards. Upkeep, which is when you would flip a Delver. Draw, main phase one. Combat, main phase two, end the turn. Done. Piece of cake. Discard the step if the, if you have to discard. And that's the whole that's the whole turn thing. That's it. Dunzo. Piece of cake. Um. But yeah, you got to write that down. You got to go over it in your head. You just got to remember that over and over and over again. You got to remember your phases because too often, too often, I'll see I'll see players who have like stuff like this. Like their lands are tapped. Here's my my ugly graveyard. Let's just get that over here. I have, like, you know, tap lands, I have creatures, and I'll go, okay, it's your turn, right? And then they'll go, okay, draw my card. Uh, oh, untap my, uh, untap my stuff. It drives me nuts, because it's not correct. You can't do it like that. You have to untap, then draw your card. Make sense? I hope it makes sense. Now, let's talk about a little bit, a couple of things that are a little bit more complicated when it comes to... No, nah, we'll do that in a little bit. Let's see what else we can go over right now. Not attacking... Huh. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is good. So this is good. We're going to start going over some of the more complicated steps. Let's go over the turn again. Okay, let's just do that. Uh, sorry, guys. I know it sounds kind of unscripted. It is unscripted. I don't care. Be, yeah, give me a break. So, let's go over the turn again. But now, we're going to go over the more complicated aspects of that turn. Deal? Deal. Let's back it up to where we were before. And I have like a million cards in my hand, just ignore that. Oh, I'll just put these ones back. How about that? So we know our Delvers. Well, let's make our Delver flip. Okay. 
So, this is all tapped, right? It's our turn. This is my hand. So my opponent says, go. And I say, great. Untap. Can you respond to untapping? No. You can't, your opponent can't do anything right now if it's your turn. So if your opponent says go, you say okay, you just get to untap. That happens. Now if there's anything that says you can't untap your lands or you can't untap this, then of course you don't untap that thing. But in general, like, your, like you can't say untap and your opponent goes in response to you untapping. No, no, no. You untap. That just happens. Now you move to upkeep. The beginning of your upkeep, Delver, everyone's favorite card, Delver, that trigger, it's called a trigger, goes onto the stack. Now a trigger, ooh, I don't know exactly how to define a trigger. A trigger is something that checks for a game state, and when that game state happens, when that thing happens in the game, then that thing happens. So for example, if you move to combat, this Delver is going to go, hmm, okay, is it the beginning of the upkeep? Nope, okay, I'm not going to do anything then. It's not like it actually checks all the time, right? It's not like it's not like in programming where it keeps checking, um, but it's kind of it's similar to that. So we hit upkeep, and the game says, "Is there anything to do during your upkeep?" And Delver says, "Yeah, yeah, I got something. I got something." Trigger your Delver. So the Delver is now on the stack. Have we looked yet? No. Look, look. You notice how my my fingers don't close? How weird is that, huh? You can't even see it very well. This finger's crooked. This one right here. How weird is that? Anyway, so Delver triggers on the stack. Your opponent can respond to this. Your opponent can say, in response to the trigger, before you look at that card, before you do anything, I'm going to gut shot that guy. Gut shot. You could respond, right? Because we have a mana leak? Uh, yeah, oh, because yeah, mana leak right here. Then we could say, okay, no mana leak. And we cast our mana leak, right? And we'll talk about casting his bond in a second. We cast mana leak. So we have Delver, gut shot, mana leak. This is what we call the stack. So we're creating a stack of things that are happening. Delver is going to flip. Well, well he's going to try. He's gonna, his trigger's on the stack. Gutshot's on the stack. Mana Leak's on the stack. How does it resolve? Mana Leak resolves first. Because that, now the game says, does anyone else have anything to do? No. Okay, Mana Leak resolves. This spell is now countered unless its controller pays three. Does controller pay three? No. Then the spell is countered. Gutshot is gone. Delver trigger, still on the stack. Then the game says, okay, does anybody want to respond to this again? You could, like, gut shot again or something, but whatever, right? So the Delver trigger now triggers. Once your opponent lets that trigger, he can't gut shot anymore. So the trigger resolves. Trigger says, check. You check. You look. Woohoo! We got the mana leak! Can your opponent respond to this? Can you say, reveal mana leak, and your opponent says, gut shot? No. It is too late. The trigger goes on. The, the trigger has already resolved. The Delver's going to flip. And that's just the end of it. Delver's now flipped. Does that make sense? Because people play that... I used to play that wrong, actually. I used to think you could respond to, to, to things flipping. Um, but you cannot. You can respond to the trigger going on the stack, but you can't respond to the thing actually flipping. Um, and so that's a good example. So Delver trigger goes on the stack. It resolves. Now you can't do anything. He gets to flip if you have a spell or an instant or a sorcery on top of your library. We move to draw step. Okay, so now we're done with upkeep. Nothing else to do in upkeep. So now we haven't actually drawn this mana leak, but it's pretty good courtesy. Once you reveal it, you just kind of, whatever, take, put it into your hand, right? So we go to draw step. So the beginning of your draw step, you draw. Then your opponent can actually respond with like a Vendillion click, which I don't, I don't have any of those here. But if I did, I would show you one. It's an instant, you know, look at their hand. Anyway, they could respond right here before you're in your main phase. They could Galvanic Blast it. Uh, we're, yeah, the mana's tapped. And we can't mana leak now because we don't have any more mana. Right? We're going to untap. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. So we're done with our draw step. Move to main phase one. So now, so far, okay, so now, now we're going to back up again, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit about how most players go through this turn. Because that was like a really long, that was like five minutes I just explained all that. How does it actually work in a game? Let's say we're at the, we're at the PTQ, or we're at the Pro Tour, or we're at a GP. What, what actually, what, what, what do you do in that situation? So here's how we do this, okay? We say, okay, the opponent says go. We say, great, untap. Trigger Delver. It's always a trigger Delver. They say, no, no, okay. And you go, great. Check. Oh, there's a mana leak. Check, he flips. So you see how I did that? I took a shortcut, right? I went right to my draw step. Now your opponent could potentially 
and respond to your draw step if he wants to. That's more on your opponent than you, unless you suspect something. But it's not like you can blaze past it, right? You can't be like, draw, tap some mana, play a card, you know? And you can't do that, right? So you draw your card. You draw, so you draw. Your opponent can respond, but you just kind of go, draw my card. Uh, okay, I will. And then you move on from there. Okay, that's about how long that should take. It shouldn't take an infinite amount of time. So now let's say we are our main phase one. We're not going to do anything, right? Because we're smart players and we don't want to do anything. Move to our combat step. Now a lot of players, I even did it just barely earlier. They'll just say attack with Delver. But we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to pretend we're at the Pro Tour. And at the Pro Tour, you're not going to see a lot of that. Maybe you will if you. I mean, okay, that's bad. Pro Tour is a bad example because they both know what's going on so well it doesn't matter. So let's say back it up. Let's say we're at a PTQ. Okay. At a PTQ, I would, if I was playing, I would say the word combat. What I'm saying is I would like to move to my combat step. I'm ending my main phase. This is where your opponent could use something like Tumble Magnet um, to tap your guy. So you say combat, moving to combat step. Your opponent then says, mm, tap your guy. And you go, dang it, oh, he can't attack. Or your opponent says, okay. Now once your opponent says, okay, you declare your attackers. So now here's how I, I got to get another dude. Okay, let's say we have two guys out here. You say, okay. He says, okay, move to your combat step. You say, okay, I'll attack with this guy and with this guy. Now you move. So, you know, combat's a little bit tricky, right? Let's, go, let's talk about steps of combat real quick. So, we have, we, so we, we have the declare attackers, then the declare attackers step. So the step goes after the thing. So we declare attackers. We declare them. They're tapped. They're attacking. Now, right here, Geist. Makes his angel. There it is. We are now in our declare attacker's step. This is where our opponent could do something nasty, like flash in, like, you know, like or, you know, cast a snapcaster mage at instant speed to block our geist if you wanted to. Something like that, during the declare attacker's step. After that, we go to declare blockers. So declare attackers, declare attacker's step. Declare blockers, what's next? Declare blockers' step. Very good. So this is where, so if you're in your declare blocker step, this is kind of tricky. Magic Online is a lot easier because it just goes through other phases. If you're in your declare blockers step, then you've already declared your blockers. So you say, okay, I want this guy to block that guy. I want this guy to block that guy. And you go, okay, great. Move to declare blockers step. Here's where a lot of Delver players will vapor snag your blocker, right? So maybe you have your guys' ain't draft and they've got some spirit tokens or some humans. And so they go, okay, I got two soldiers. I'm going to double block your Geist. This is where the Dever player goes, gotcha. And they say, during your declare blocker step, after they've been declared, I'm going to vapor snag one of them back to your hand. That way my Geist doesn't die. Can you declare more blockers? No. You've already declared your blockers in this step. So then your declare blocker step, you can cast instants and sorceries. Then we move to combat damage step. This is where damage is dealt. So then, after the clear blockers, everything deals damage to itself. Then we actually have a combat damage step, which is after you, do ha you have your combat damage dealt. But remember, damage doesn't go on the stack. That was kind of a like a like a like a rules change that happened with, back with M when M10 came, M10 came out. Damage doesn't go on the stack anymore. So what this means is, if they if these two block if these two attacks, so I have my Geist of Saint Trapped attacking into a spirit a soldier token, combat damage. He's dealt two damage, he's dealt one damage. Then when we go to move to our declare or our, our combat damage step, he's gone. He's dead. He's in the graveyard. Well, kind he goes to the graveyard, then goes away. And our guys is still there. This whole time, there's this we're still in combat. Right? We, everything's been dealt damage, though. The player's taken his damage. All damage dealt at the same time. Unless there's first strike. If there's first strike or double strike. Then there's actually almost like two combat phase, combat damage phases, where first strike is dealt, then you can respond, then normal damage is dealt, then you can respond again. So like maybe you could have, like if you attack with a mirror and crusader and it gets like triple blocked so that it could die, you could have it deal its first strike damage to something, kill it, then respond by vapor snagging something, I don't know, and then that way there's no more damage. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying, I hope. So in that just that combat, we have combat damage. 
So here we have, we have declare attackers, then the declare attacker step, declare blockers, declare blockers step, combat damage, combat damage step, and then we end combat. Ending combat, that's when this angel goes away from Geist of St. Traft. Gonzo. That's when things like Battle Cry stop happening. Anything it says until the end of combat. Uh, so like Geist of St. Traft, I'm going to read it to you. It says, whenever Geist of St. Traft attacks, put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Exile that token at the end of combat. That's what it says. I don't know, you guys probably can't read that, but that's what it says. End of combat, the angel goes away. Now, we're going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to go over a little bit something, something a little bit more advanced, but it's really important to know. And it's this mofo right here. I'm going to take him out of sleep. You guys got to see this guy. This guy. Oh, look at that glitch. It's weird. Gideon. Gideon's got an ability that says, during target opponent's next turn, creatures that player controls attack Gideon Jura if able. This is a great... I'm glad this came up. So here we go. Let's say our opponent has a Gideon Jura. And he used his plus two ability on his turn. So it's our turn. We're going to move into combat. And we're going to have to attack this Gideon Jura. So we declare... So we say, okay. Enter combat. Our opponent says, good. Do it. Then we say, okay. Declare attackers. This is where you declare where your attackers are going. I forgot to mention this before. You, you declare your attackers. You say, guys, this ain't trapped. And Delver of Secrets... Geist is entrapped, is attacking, Gideon Jura. Delver of Secrets is attacking, Gideon Jura. Because Gideon said we had to do that. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. Then, Geist of St. Traft's ability goes on the stack. His trigger goes on the stack. And the angel comes into play. Does the angel have to attack Gideon Jura? Think about it. Think about it. Answer it. Out loud. Say the answer out loud. One, two, three. No. No, it does not. Because you declare what you're attacking during your, during your declare attacker's step. So it says must attack. So it says, ooh, let's read it again. During target opponent's next turn, creatures that player controls attack Gideon Jira if able. The reason we're going over this is because it's tricky. Because it doesn't make sense if you just read the card. Because you'd think, oh, okay, then the angel has to attack Gideon Jira as well. But it doesn't. This puts a trigger. I mean, this, puts a, this, puts a, this puts an ability onto the stack. Is it an ability? Trigger? This puts uh, an effect on this. Anyway, I can't think of the word right now. I'm tired. Put something onto this. It puts something onto the not onto the stack. Oh man, I can't believe I can't remember the word right now. Anyway, make something happen. Saying saying that when you declare attackers, you must declare them attacking Gideon Jura. Dunzo. They end. That's all that affects. So there's Gideon Jura. Your angel comes into play. You can pick. You can say, I want this angel to attack Gideon Jura, or I want this angel to attack you in your face. You get a pick. Same with Hero Bladehold, creating those two uh, soldiers. Because they're tapped and already attacking, then you get to tell where they go to attack. It sounds weird. It's kind of tough to understand right at first, but I promise you that's exactly how it works. And so we've done our combat step. We're done. Gideon died. Woohoo, we win! Good guys prevail, right? Because Delver players are the good guys, of course. Then we go into main phase two, then we're done. And that's it. That's the turn. Not too tough, right? Not too tough at all. Whew. I'm getting kind of sweaty. It's getting hot down here. So now what I want to do, I want to talk about some specifics. Oh, let's put this back on our sideboard. Gideon Jura's in the sideboard because he's awesome. Okay, let's talk about some specifics, okay? Let's talk about what happens when you draw a card. Your average player, when he draws a card, okay, let's say we're mana screwed, right? We need land. We need land really, really bad. We just don't have any. Who crap. Oh, man. Okay. Come on, deck. Right? We're smacking the top of the deck. Come on, deck. We reveal? Yes, it's an island. We're so good. This is actually not the way we want to do this. Because it tells our opponent, oh, man, he doesn't have any more mana in his hand. And they can take advantage of that. Now, the best thing to do would be to just draw your card like you do. I, like, I actually like to shuffle it, which I know sounds funny, but I shuffle my hand every time I draw a card. And then I play my land. Or, I'll, or then I do whatever I'm going to do. It just kind of lets you, it just kind of doesn't give your opponent any information at all. Now this is a very, this isn't like a big, big deal. This isn't like you're going to like lose FNM because you, you drew and put your land down. But it's just about giving your opponent extra information. You just don't want to give them anything. So you draw and you just shuffle. I kind of shuffle like this. Maybe I'll put it over here. Grab it again, and there it goes. And he doesn't know if I just do that or if it was already in my hand. 
Let's talk about miracle cards. Let's pretend that's a miracle. I don't know if I have any miracle cards. I don't think I have any. I don't know if I have a bonfire in here. I used to have a bonfire in this red green deck. Uh, no, I don't anymore. That's okay. Let's just pretend that island is a bonfire of the damned or something. A miracle card. Let's talk about miracle cards. How are we going to do this miracle card thing? So I'm going to go draw it. Oh, oh, it's still in the front. Cast the miracle card. Cast it, cast it. It's still right in the front. Nah, it's too late for that. Once you take a card, put it into your hand, you've drawn it. It's now a part of your hand. You can't cast this as a miracle anymore. If this was a miracle. We're pretending, right? Pretending. Miracle Island. What? The only way to do this, the card can't touch your hand. And really, it shouldn't come that close either. Like, if you hold like this, and you're like, oh, and you're like, oh, 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 millimeter away, it's not touching, it's not touching, cast a miracle. Come on, just don't be ridiculous. The best way to cast a miracle is you go to draw your card, you look, and you go, miracle. It didn't even come close to your hand. There's no way your opponent could have thought it was going to your hand. Miracle, right there. That's just a little thing. So now, what really good players are doing right now is they're kind of drawing every card kind of like that. They're just kind of looking, and then they draw. Every time. That's how I draw my cards. I look, then I draw. You know how many miracles my Delver deck has? It doesn't have any. It has zero miracles in it. But I still draw my cards like that. It's just a good habit to get into, because your opponent never knows, right? You could go, oh, oh, no, just kidding. Not a miracle. Right? You just kind of psych your opponent out. It's not super important. Like I said, this isn't going to win you an FNM either. But it's, it's kind of good to know. It's good to know that you should have, be consistent in how you draw, and it's consistent in, in the way you, you act when you're drawing your cards. It should always be the same. That way your opponent know, doesn't know, like, oh, crap, I need this so bad. Or if you just lost, right? You're like, whatever, it doesn't matter what I draw. Just meh, just give me the stupid card. I'll just put it in my hand or whatever. Garbage. Right? Just draw every card the same. I draw, I go, check, draw. Oh, why did we do that? Why did I do that, right? So I looked. Put it on the table, drag it towards me, pick it up. This this is just a habit, because just it's just another way to show people I'm not drawing two cards. Because like for example, you can set up your deck. Oh no, I can't. That card's going on the bottom somewhere in there, because it's all sweaty now. So you can actually like it, it's not very tough to like draw two cards. Sometimes these things are pretty new, but you can really set up your deck so that you just kind of draw two cards. It's really tough for people to see that this is two cards, but it is right. That's really tough to see. So a lot of times, so what I'll do is, so I like to drag it there to show people that's only one card. It's just a little habit that I have. You don't have to do that. But for example, I have two cards right here, right? If I draw two and then I drag it, oh, I can't drag them both. Or like it gets really awkward. Oh, ugh, and they just separate. Little thing people do. I mean, you don't have to do that, but eh, why not, right? Um, so that's how I draw. Um... Let's see. Oh, okay, here's another good thing. So I'm just kind of jumping around a little bit now. Let's talk about Soul Bond, all right? Let's get this beautiful red. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm glad you know, saw these cards. Let's get this beautiful red green deck that's so sexy and nice. I'm going to talk a little bit about triggers. Oh, my Huntmaster, someone's borrowing them right now. Let's talk about triggers for a second, okay? So here I have a Stranguru Geist. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Look at that pretty acidic slime. And a wolf ear, so a heart, okay? And then I've got a bunch of cards. This is red green, okay. So, Stranguru Geist in play. Wolf ear, silver heart. I want to pair this to my Stranguru Geist. So let's talk about how we do this, right? This is part of casting a spell and priority. So let's talk about how we cast a spell first. Man, you know, that's too, I don't want to talk about that right now. It's just a little too much for that. But you need to, you know, so, so we pay our mana cost, we declare, you know, we do everything we're going to do, right? So we say, okay, I'm going to play this Soul Fear Silver Heart. So I've got my hand. We have our mana down here. And I say, okay, uh, tap five, Wolf Fear Silver Heart on the Strength Guru Geist. Pair those two. Oh, I just got a screensaver. That was weird. Is that right? Is that how you do that? No, it's not. It's not actually how you do that. Here's what you want to do. This is the proper way to cast a creature that has Soul Bond. Okay. You're going to cast this spell. You're going to put on the stack. Cast Wolf or Silverheart. Then you're going to wait for your opponent. And they're going to say, Mana Leak. And you're going to go, Screw Delver's stupidest deck. No, you're not. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to say, Okay, cast Wolf or Silverheart. Any responses? They say, No. You say, Great. 
enters the battlefield. Here's how Soul Bond works. The reason I'm going over Soul Bond is because here's what it says on the card. You may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. They remain paired for as long as you control both of them. The most important wording here is when either enters the battlefield. So it's like when such and such enters the battlefield. When this happens, when this enters the battlefield, right? When Wolfer Silverheart enters the battlefield, if there's another creature that you could pair it to, Soul Bond triggers. It goes on the stack. Soul Bond. You don't have to say with what. The reason, because Wolfier Silverheart doesn't say target. It says you may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. If it said with target creature, then you have to target it when, when it's on the stack. That's a very complicated way of talking about that, but it's, I think it's really important. So I'm actually going to get an example from the Delver deck as well. Because it's really important to understand the difference there. So let's get another interaction that kind of sucks sometimes. Usually it's really good, but sometimes it just sucks. And it is this interaction. These two. These two don't play very well together. And here's why. I'm going to get an English version of this angel. Because that one's in Spanish and you guys don't speak Spanish. Okay. Let's read Restoration Angel, okay? When Restoration Angel enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-angel creature you control. Then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Okay, so, got my Phantasmal Image. There it is. It's the only card I have, okay? This red-green deck is gone right now. Phantasmal Image, only card I have. Only creature I have in play. And I cast my Angel. Do I have to target my Phantasmal Image? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes. You do have to target your Phantasmal Image. Even if you don't want to exile it, you have to target it. That's just the way it goes when you're casting Restoration Angel. So it enters the battlefield, its trigger goes on the stack. When it goes on the stack, you have to target something. So you have to target your Phantasmal Image. Or in, this, or in a different case, your Wolf of Zero Heart, right? You target it. Then you, say, then you may choose to do it or not. Now this is important to know because it doesn't, it doesn't say that very clearly on the card, but it's important to know. If it says something like, you may exile target non- Whenever it says target, you have to target something if it's possible. Even if you don't, even if you choose not to do it to that thing. That's why Restoration Angel and Phantasmal Image kind of stinks. Because you have to target the Phantasmal Image, and the Phantasmal Image is going to sacrifice itself because it was targeted. Even if you choose not to do the ability of Restoration Angel, it had to target. Now if you have two creatures, like this, well, if Silverheart, Image, and then you cast the Angel, well, then you can target the Silverheart instead and choose whether or not to flicker it. Can you pair Silverheart to Image? Yes, because it doesn't say the word target. That word target is so important. Because it doesn't say target, you can pair them. So here we have our Silverheart and our Strangru Geist. Put Soul Bond on the stack. We're not targeting anything. So if we have, like, two Strangru Geists... Our opponent can't kill one of them in response, right? So we say, Silverheart, does it resolve? Yes. Soul Bond on this deck. Does Soul Bond resolve? If they say yes, they're paired. Dunzo can't, can't respond to it anymore. You can only respond when it goes on the stack. So I don't know if that's clear. I hope that's clear. I hope that made sense. Let's see. Oh, I just kind of burped. That was kind of gross. Let's see. <sighs> kind of looking at some other things we want to talk about. Man, I wish I had like people here that maybe could like ask questions or you know something like that. I'm not 100 percent sure what else we want to talk about right now. What are some other habits players might have? Uh, drawing for and tapping. Tapping and then popping all the creatures. Let's see here. Oh, okay, that's good. That's not bad. Okay, so we're playing our red green deck again, right? It doesn't matter. We have a we have a copper line gorge. We got a forest. We need more mana. Dirtbound crag forest. Perfect. Okay. This is something that new players do a lot that you have to learn how to not do. So here I've got my mana and I got two Strangaroo geists and I'm like yes yeah, so I'm gonna cast them both. So you go like this and you say two Strangaroo geists. And you say, and they're attacking. <laughs> well, you should slow down, right? Especially in the PTQ. 
Because what if your opponent wants to respond to one of those? If you just go, bang, there they are. And your opponent wanted to mana leak the first one? Then actually you get a game rules violation because you were not... Um, oh man, I don't know. This is why I'm not a level 1 judge, right? But you can get a game rules violation because you just skipped ahead. You didn't give your opponent the time because you're reviewing cards. I don't know if you actually get a game rules violation. I don't want to say that and like guarantee that when you might not get it. But you're, giving, you're definitely giving your opponent extra information and you want to cast another one. How you should do this is you should tap your mana, play the spell. Now some players, and it's okay if you do this, right? It's not against the rules. We'll put the spell on the table, cast during Grogeist using that mana. That's okay too. Just make sure you tap the mana, right? What you don't want to do is say Stranger Geist, and then uh, and then all oh, Galvanic Blast. Oh shoot! Oh, there's Stranger Geist. There's my Galvanic Blast. You don't want to do that, right? You just want to cast your Stranger Geist. You want to say two Stranger Geist. Does he resolve? Yes. Okay. Two more Stranger Geist. Move to combat. They say okay. And you go whammo, and then they take four to the face. So that, so that, that's kind of important to know. Just make sure you cast your spells. Just take your time. I mean, magic games don't have to go super slow. It may seem like, like, like I'm talking about just going like unbelievably slow with these magic card games, right? But it really doesn't have to go that slow at all. So I've got my, so like in the PTQ, I mean, this happened, this situation happened a lot where I'd be like, two, Stranger Geist? And I just kind of like that, Stranger Geist? And they'd say, okay. And like, all right, Stranger Geist? Yeah, okay. All right, combat, swing. That's pretty fast. It's not like you're taking 12 years and, opponent, do you want to respond to my spell? You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you, you, you just, you know, Stranger Geist? Okay. Stranger Geist? Okay. Now, also remember, especially the level of PTQ, right? If you go Stranger Geist, and they say, okay, and you go, great, Stranger Geist, and they say, oh, no, I want to counter the first one. Too late, too late, too bad. First one has resolved. We are on to the second one now. Give them time, but then don't go back a lot. Either, if that makes sense. Like, you don't need to give your opponent a bunch of them to back up. That's it, a PTQ. F and M, whatever, back up all you want. Doesn't really matter at all. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, exile, regeneration. Oh, regeneration. That's kind of interesting. Let's look at this wolf here. Where's this guy? Avenger. Now, this one is really important to know because it doesn't make sense when you read the card. Regenerate. What does regenerate do? It brings it back from the dead, right? No. How weird is that? It doesn't. If it did, like, it would die and then come back. We have something like that. It's called undying. Or persist. Regeneration stops the creature from dying. That's what it does. So if, you, if you're in combat, this is really good. So if you're in combat, and you're blocked with your Wolf or Avenger, right? And you need to regenerate it. You need to know which phase of combat, which step in combat to regenerate this guy. Because regeneration does two things. It removes all damage that's on that creature... That's marked to be on that's yeah, that's on that creature, and it taps it, and if it's in combat, it removes it from combat. So we're blocking. And now we now, but remember, regeneration, it, it's tricky, it's even trickier than that. Because when you regenerate, it puts like a bubble around the creature that says, the next time this creature would die, instead, and then do those three things. Remove all damage, tap it, move from combat if it's in combat. So you could actually say they and oh this turn that's the other that's the other specification this turn. So they say I attack with my Sun Titan and you're like block with Wolfie Avenger, tap two mana regenerate. You can do that whenever you want. He's not gonna tap right then. He's also not gonna die. He'll deal his damage to Sun Titan. Sun Titan will deal his damage back to Wolfie Avenger. Then the game checks and sees oh there's six damage on Wolfie Avenger. He needs to die. But because you've tapped your two mana you've, and you've activated his ability, it says regenerate. There's a bubble that stops it and says, nope, instead of him dying, take all the damage off. Tap him, take him out of combat. So that's how you regenerate. If it's already tapped, that's okay. It, it, you can still totally regenerate. It just means if it's not tapped, then tap it. Huh. So that's kind of interesting. Um, triggered abilities and activated abilities. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's. I mean, I guess that's something, right? Like a triggered ability is like Delver's flip, right? Or a triggered ability is like Blood Artist, right? It triggers. It goes on the stack. It just. It just goes on the stack. You could stifle it so it doesn't happen anymore. You could, you know, but you can't mana like a triggered ability, right? You also can't mana like activated. Activated ability is where you pay the cost, and then it goes on the stack. So, for example, regenerate is an activated ability. 
That's backwards. I keep forgetting it's backwards. You pay the one colorless and a forest, and then or, and, a, and a green mana. I guess you could say forest mana, whatever. Um, and then the regeneration goes on the stack. Triggered, it just happens, right? It's when you attack, or and the Geist and Traps makes an angel, or a uh, Huntmaster comes into play. Triggers to make a to make a two two wolf. Um. Yeah, I don't know if I can think of any other. I mean, there's uh, there's other stuff that that people do all the time. But I hope this is informative. I hope it wasn't like too long and too crazy. Let's put the camera back on me. Look, I'm tired. I need Gatorade. Gatorade. Oh, I gotta tell you guys a secret. I really like magic. Um, I just like playing. Look, my eyes are getting red. Oh, I'm tired. Um. I'm kind of sweaty. It's kind of hot, but I'm having a good time. I hope you guys learned. Um, I hope you guys learned stuff. Um, I don't know if I can think of any other bad habits right now. Let's see if there's anything else we could talk about, really. Um, attacking, forecasting, so it's passing priority. Yeah, it seems fine. Um, make sure you keep everything organized. Make sure you know where your graveyard is compared to your deck, and like, kind of keep it all separate a little bit. Keep your lands in the same place. Um... Uh, regeneration, you gen, do, 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 yeah, um, I, I think that's great, there are more basic things we could go over, but I don't want to go over too much of that, because, um, I think you guys might get bored, to be honest, you guys might already be bored, if you stuck around this long, props to you, well done, um, I want to talk about a little bit about plans for what we're going to be looking at, look at my shirt, look at what we're going to be looking to do in the future, um, I'm going to start doing a couple of these a week, I really like it, I think people had a really good time with it, um, and, yeah, so I'm not going to do one tomorrow, because Batman comes out tomorrow, Batman! By the time you see this, probably I will have already seen Batman. And, uh, it was great, even though I haven't seen it yet. I know it's going to be great, because, uh, I'm a loser like that, and I just, I just know it's going to be great, I guess. I don't really have a reason. Um, but we're going to keep talking about this. Um, I think next time I go over that card advantage thing, we're going to talk about deck building, we're going to talk about drafting a little bit. Um, and then, also, someone had a really good idea. Which was, I can't remember who, I, I didn't see who it was, uh, I can't remember their name now, but I posted on YouTube comment on my first video, that we could kind of borrow from Day 9 more, and we could do something like a Newbie Tuesday, or a Fun Day Monday, or, you know how he, he does that kind of stuff, or maybe on a specific day, it's a specific theme. I thought maybe we could start doing live streams, and we could do q and I feel pretty good about my rules knowledge, I feel pretty good about my, my deck knowledge overall. Um, I don't want to do, like, deck doctor stuff, I don't want to, like, fix your decks, because, I'll be honest, um, I prefer playing my own decks. I mean, I'm, whoa, whoa, I don't. I prefer not playing my... I prefer playing the best decks. Um, I don't brew a lot because I'm not very good at brewing. And uh, I, I like to see what other players have done. Now, that doesn't mean I just copy 75 cards and go. There's a ton of thought. And there's a ton of, of worry and angst that goes into to deck building, even when there's a deck that's already created. So, for example, when we went to the PTQ with Delver... Um, you know, you take a look at the Delver decks. Take a look at all the top decks, what they're doing. Uh, we took a look at... All at the Star City Invitational, every Delver deck in the top 32, as well as in the GPs that had happened that weekend and the weekend before. Every single list. We compared every single list. We looked at every single card. We talked about numbers and ratios and why there were three Restoration Angels and Yuyas, but there were four in Jerry T's. Talked about Consecrated Sphinx versus Day of Judgment versus Amass the Components versus Gideon. Um, it's really interesting to take a deck that's already been basically built, like the archetype is, exists, the archetype exists, but then just pushing it to that next level. Taking, making it your own, but also making it good for the meta and for what is available, what's going to happen um, during that tournament. Um, but yeah, I, I, I keep looking at the cards because I just want to play cards. Uh, I have this job right now. I love my job, but I'm not able to play Magic at nights. Uh, like going to Monday Night Magic or Friday Night Magic. I don't go right now anymore. Um, but hopefully I will soon again. And I'm definitely traveling a little. You know, I'm doing that. I'm playing in the big events. I'm just not playing in the little ones, so I don't get to play every night a couple of rounds of Magic. Uh, and I miss it. But that's okay. Uh, I think it's worth it. No, it's definitely worth it uh, to be able to do this for you guys. Um, but I think for now I'm going to wrap it up. I don't know how long this has been going. Probably another, I don't know, like an hour or something like that. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go to work. And I'm going to see Batman. And I think I'll do another one of these on Saturday or Sunday. But in the meantime, give me some ideas. What do you want to see? Maybe on Tuesdays we could do this. Fridays we could do Q&A or something. Um, Tuesdays we could do... Newbie Tuesday, where we go over some more basic stuff. We could do drafting on Wednesdays. Whatever you guys want to do, we'll do. We'll talk about. Um, and in the meantime, I'll prepare more content for you. 
But yeah, thanks so much for sticking by and for watching this whole thing. And rock on and go see Batman!